Hi everyone, in this lesson I want to talk about how you find the equation of a line between two points and then also give an example of a of a uh, applied problem that makes use of that. So suppose I want to find the equation of the linear function, the equation line that goes through these points uh, 2, 6 and 4, 1. So you can see it's going to look something like this. Okay, you remember that to find the equation line you always need two things. We need a point on the line and in fact here we have two and we also need the slope. And so the point of this example is that if you don't have the slope um, there should be some information or you'll need to have some other information in order to find it. In this case I know that the slope um, is going, uh, we have a formula to find the slope between two points. All right, so so we need we need a point, and let's just choose one of them. It doesn't matter. Let's take this one because it looks like the numbers are a little bit smaller. So let's just choose, and it won't matter which one you choose. So just choose the one that looks the easiest for you. Let's just choose for one, and then I need the slope. And the slope is just going to be the difference of the y's. Let's just take this y minus this one. So my slope's going to be 1 minus 6 over the difference of my x's, 4 minus 2. So that's going to be a negative 5 over 2. And then all I need to do is plug that into the point slope form of the line. y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. So I've got y minus 1, so I chose this point right here to be my my uh, y1, and that's going to equal my slope, negative 5 halves, times x minus x1, which is 4. Okay, so here's my x1, and here's my slope. I found that to be minus 5 halves, and so I just plug those in there. So I get y minus 1 is going to be a negative 5 halves x. So when I distribute over here, I'm going to get t plus a 20 halves, so that's plus 10. And so I'm going to get y equals a negative 5 halves x plus 11. Okay, so that would be my equation in slope intercept form. And as a check, I can come over to my graph and it looks like uh, my slope should be negative 5 halves. So if I want a rise of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a run of negative 2, that is another point. In fact, that puts me right on the y axis and that should be my y intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and sure enough, that is 11 up there. Okay, so now let's use this information to uh, uh, analyze some data and make some predictions, find the equation of a more real life sort of a problem here. So uh, the problem here that I've taken from uh, intermediate algebra graphs and models from by Bittinger, Ellen Bogan, and Johnson says that in 1971 the average American man consumed so many calories per day and then by 2000, so that's like, uh, you know, 29 years later, it had risen to 2,618 calories per day. So, so the idea here is that over, over those years, American men have been eating uh, more and more on average. So it asks us to let C of T represent the, the average number of calories consumed per day by an American man T years after 1971. So, so the first thing we want to do is is very carefully write down our, our variables here, and I'm going to also uh, correspond these to x's and y's because that's what we we've uh, been thinking about in terms of our our equation. So, so let's let uh, x um, be the uh, number that's going to correspond to the t years. That's going to be the number of years. since 1971. Okay, and 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 that's going to be the same as t when I'm all done here, but I'm going to use x to start with. And we're going to let y, y is the function value, in this case c of t, that's going to be the average number of calories consumed per day.
and this is actually one of the most important things you can do as a student is actually write these things down so you're very clear in your mind what these variables represent okay so again this this right here that's that's going to be the same thing as c of t that's my output okay so what I want here to see is that is that there's actually some ordered pairs so in 1971 um, 1971 that corresponds to to t or x equals 0 and then in 2000 that's going to correspond to t or x equaling well that would be like 29 years later right so I've got I've got an ordered pair at, at time 0 in 1971 the number of calories the y value is 2450 and then in in um, uh, year 29 the uh, 29 years after that that's the year 2000 then there are uh, 2618 okay so <clears throat> from that information I can find the slope I know that the I have a point right now I'm going to choose this point because that point uh, by letting 1971 be sort of our starting base point then then that makes the this actually be a y-intercept so so let's choose this point um, so I'm going to choose my point to be 0, 24, 50. You could use the other one if you wanted, but that's going to make you think harder. And uh, and then the the uh, slope is just find the slope, right? So it's the difference of y's, 2,618 minus 24,50 over 29 minus 0. Okay, so let's uh, use our little handy dandy pocket calculator for that. So I got 2618 minus 2450 is 168 uh, over 29 years. So so what that's saying is that is that uh, on average the number of calories consumed per day has gone up 168 over the last 29 years. Okay? So I don't think that uh, reduces to anything very nice. Um, get my calculator back up there. Let's try dividing it by 29. Okay. So I think I'm just going to leave that as 168.29. So you'll find an algebra that uh, fractions tend to be easier than all those nasty decimals. So what I have then is I've got uh, I can do it one of two ways since I have the y-intercept I know that my y my, my equation is going to be y equals mx plus b so I just get y equals my slope 168 29 x and then my y-intercept right here that's my y-intercept plus 2450 Okay, the other way you could do it is you could use the point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I get y minus my y, I'm using this point again, right? So my y1 is 2450, and that's going to be my slope 168 29ths times x minus 0. So in this case, notice that this I don't really have to distribute, this is just x if I take the the uh, 2450 on the other side that's almost as fast as just plugging it into y equals mx plus b alright but you certainly get the same thing okay so um, now let's write it in terms of the variables that they gave us so this was the same thing as my c of t right my calories is a function of time over the years is 168 29ths t, t was the, the year, plus 
50. So there's my answer to part A. I have a I have a formula now that tells me and so notice that if you tell me the year after 1971 I can plug that in here for T and that'll that'll tell you based on this model how many calories men were consuming or alternatively if you tell me the number of calories then I could I could plug that in right here and then work backwards to tell you what year that was and that's what part B and C are asking so for part B so all this is is part A so here's part B part B says use the function from part A to predict the average number of calories consumed per day by an American man in 2008 so so 2008 that corresponds to uh, T being 2008 minus 1971 so there's 29 years plus another eight years that's going to be uh, 37 okay so so what I want here is the calories 37 years after uh, 1971 so that would be 168 twenty ninths times 37 plus the 2450 so I'd go ahead and plug that into my my calculator here so let me move that over where we can see what we're doing here so I've got uh, 168 27 that's that number right there uh, let me go ahead and just store that as X in case I need that later because now I can just multiply that by 37 and then add the 2450 and it gives me out 2,664.3 calories in 2008. Okay, so that's what this model would would predict if men continued to consume and increase at that same amount. Now Part C says when. So when it says when, that's saying remember this formula here. Uh, I have two variables I don't know either the time or the calories and if you tell me one we can find the other so this says when so that's looking for time will the average calories consumed reach 2750 so in this case um, I have I have this same formula C of T is the 168 29th T plus the 2450 but in this case they tell us the calories 2750 and we want to find how many years after 1971 that is. Okay, so I need to solve this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the 2450 over on this side. So that would be 300 equals 168 29ths T. So what I did there is I really subtracted 2450 from both sides. And then I just simply have to multiply by the reciprocal 29 over 168. So I'm going to get here that T is equal to 2968s times 300. It ends up being about 51.8 years after 1971. So 51.8 years after 1971 is going to be 2023 okay okay thanks for joining me